All right, what's up everybody? So today we're gonna to be making something kind of cool. We're gonna be making a bolo or bola, which is a South American throwing weapon, which consisted of a number of weights, usually three, attached to rope, which was then used to throw and wrap around the legs of either an enemy or a fleeing prey or something like that. So what you're gonna need for this project is you're going to need some large, fairly strong synthetic rope. You're going to need some smaller synthetic twine. I'm saying synthetic because it's a lot stronger if you try to use a twine with like a natural fiber like cotton twine. It's just gonna break and it's not gonna work nearly as well. It will look more authentic, but it's gonna cause a lot of pain and a lot of headache. And finally, you're going to need your weights. Now, your weights can really be whatever you want, but if you want an authentic look and you want it to be really very similar to what they used to use, I would suggest getting three smooth stones that are very similar in size and that fit in the palm of your hand. So that's what you're gonna need. So let's see how this works. So the first thing you're going to do is take your small twine and you're going to encase your weight in a net of small twine. So when you're done tying up your weight, it's gonna look something like this. It's basically in a fish net of twine. There's no way for it to get out. Um, and it looks very authentic. This is exactly how they used to do it back in the Middle Ages when they used to use this weapon for hunting. So let's see how we actually tie this net of twine in order to encompass the weight. Okay, so this is what your finished product is going to look like. I've tied a self-tightening knot here in my main twine, and then I have formed a kind of a fishnet around the stone of my, with my smaller twine. So in order to make this kind of fishnet, you're going to start out with your twine. So what I like to do is get about a two or three foot section of twine, and <clears throat> then what I do is I take the end and I tie a loop in the end. Now the loop needs to be about the size that you want the hole. So I'm gonna want a loop about that big because those are the hole, that's the size of the hole I want in the fishnet because that won't allow the stone to go through, but it will give a nice solid grip. So then what you do is you simply put it on your stone and then you're going to form another loop. So I want this to sit on this por portion of the stone. So I'm gonna take another piece of twine. I'm gonna go, okay, so I'm just gonna tie another knot right here and I'm gonna form another section of my net. Now this this is what takes time because you just simply, what I like to do is put on a good TV show and I just kind of start to work with it. So now I've got two sections of my net. So I'm gonna go, okay, where do I want my third section? So I'm just gonna have another portion of my net go right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, loop it through until I have the size hole I want right about there. I'm gonna tie it again. Now I just tie a single overhand knot for each one of these because they're so intertwined that you don't need really complicated knots on each one. So look, now I've got two sections of my net, so now it covers that whole section. So now what I'm gonna do is just form another loop up here. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to knot it again <clears throat> in, a very, in a similar way. I'm going to loop it through. Okay, so now I got three sections there. So each in between each section, I just put it back on the stone and see how it sits. And, I, and I'm gonna see where I want my next section to lie. Just keep doing this until you have your rock fully en encased in twine. This is what the finished product looks like. So once you're done and you think you've tied all the knots you need to in your stone, what you wanna do is shake it around real good to make sure that none of these holes are going to widen because it may look like you have it fully encased, but then you shake it around, next thing you know, the rock has made a hole that was this big, suddenly that big, and it's squeezed through and uh, it's fallen out. So you take it and you shake it around real good, bounce it around, make sure none of your loops are getting extra wide or that nothing is coming apart. And once you've done that, you're good to go. Okay, so once you have the rock fully encased in your twine, you're going to need to form the part where you're gonna tie the rope on. So I formed it right here, you can see that. So all that, all you do to, to make that is you take some lengths of twine, about anywhere from eight to 10, maybe 12 inches long, cut them, and you simply find a section of your, your mesh, your fishnet around the rock. You slip it under there, you tie it on with a double overhand knot real easily, real quick. Then you leave it loose like this. You go over, you find another section. It really doesn't matter where. And you tie it to that section as well, which gives you the uh, the hanger. And then you do two or three of those. So I do one here, do one across it, and then do another one, which would give me three of them, which is plenty of strength. So I'm not gonna tie another one on there because I already have 
I already have it right here. So you can see that it attaches to lots of places on the rock. So it really gives it a nice, strong place to pull from. You never want to uh, just have one going across because then it's only pulling on two of these little pieces of twine. Under tension, that will probably break the twine. So now what you do is you take your, your real thick, strong twine, you loop it through there, and then you're gonna tie a self-tightening knot. Um, so what you do is you form a loop like that. You take your, your side with the end, and you go around, and you go inside one, two, and three times. So you wrap it, you wrap your length of rope around the rope three times. Then you come here to this side like this. You tie a double overhand knot here. And this is going to form a real good knot that will tighten on itself. So the more tension you put on it, the more um, the more the knot tightens. So that's what the knot should look like. So it's wrapped around three times here, then it's got a double overhand knot. Then all you do is you slide it down, slide the tightening knot all the way down, and uh, you give it a nice tug on there so it's nice and tight on your rock or your weight. Okay, so once you have your three stones securely encased in your mesh, you're going to then cut the length of rope you want for each one. So when I measure this out, I like to put the tip of the tape measure right at the top where the rope meets the thinner netting. And then I measure it out and I wanna do three and a half feet because that's just about the right length. So I'm just gonna go down here, let's see, three foot six inches right there. So that's the one. Now I'm just going to do that with my other two ones, just so that they all have an even length of rope. So now I have three, three lengths of rope that are the exact same length. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay my stones down here, right next to each other, so I know the ropes are in the, in the same place. And I know I'm getting an even read on these. I'm gonna line up the ends. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie an overhand knot together with all three of them at the end here. So I'm gonna get that as close to the end as I can so that it's nice and secure. You wanna make sure these are even. So you're gonna snug that down real nice and tight. And I'm just gonna double, double overhand knot it just to make sure it's nice and secure. So there we go, we got our knot in the end. That's nice and secure. And what I've done is I've melted the ends of the rope here so that it won't fray. You don't have to do that, but I think it's a good idea to do. There we go. So now we got our three stones. We have an even length. We have an even length of rope. So this is ready to go. So now that we finished our bolo, let's see how it works. All right. Well, there you go. That's how you. Uh, that's how you make a bolo out of some twine and stones. Um, they seem to work pretty well. And if I uh, had the time or inclination, I'm sure I could learn how to use this very effectively. Um, if this was helpful to you, like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.